Well, today we're going to continue, or actually we're going to wrap up this series, Own Up, where we've been looking at what it is to take ownership of our time, ownership of our gifts and our talents, ownership of our desires. Today we're going to talk about taking ownership over the way we love, the way we give and receive love. Now, if you're as old as I am, you might remember a song from the 60s called Silhouettes. Anybody remember that song? Yeah, it's a great song. It tells the story of a young man, he's walking by his girlfriend's house, and as he's walking by, he sees on the shade, the window shade's pulled down, he sees on the shade the silhouettes of two two people, a guy and a girl, embracing. And he's like, man, what's happening in there? My girlfriend's embracing this, this other guy. And he can't understand, he can't say, why am I not the guy whose silhouette is on the shade? So he heart is breaking, you know, and he gets up the, the nerve. He goes up, he starts ringing the bell. He starts banging on the door. He starts threatening that if they don't open the door, he's going to beat it down. And suddenly that door flies open. And there are two strangers who had been silhouettes on the shade saying to his shock that he's on the wrong block. It's not his girlfriend's house at all. So with that, he, he, he runs down to his girlfriend's actual house with Wings on his feet, he says. And then he holds her like he's never held her before. And then he vows that he and she should always be silhouettes on the shade for all of their days. See, what had happened to him changed his perspective on his love for his girlfriend. After the understanding that he could lose her, he was ready to embrace her. Hold on to her forever. Changed his whole attitude towards his girlfriend. We sometimes need that. We need an attitude adjustment or a change in the way that we perceive love, how we give love and what we, how we receive love, and what love even is. Now, if you're a Christian today, you probably think of love and you think of God as love. You might even think of that verse from 1 John that is so simple. It says, God is love. And of course, God is love. God is love. God is also giving. God gives us everything, doesn't he? God gives us food. He gives us water. He gives us air. He provides the infrastructure for our very lives. So God is always giving in his love. He's giving. He gives us our emotions so that we can understand and give and receive love that hopefully we first experience with our parents' love and their care for us. He also gives us something that he gives to no other creature. He gives to us uh, the sense of our personhood, the sense of ourselves as distinct from all other people. He gives us this sense of ourselves as special. He also gives us himself. He gives us evidence of who he is. Not only does he put that in our hearts, he gives us a longing for him in our hearts, but he also gives us evidence of him. He gives us a revelation of who he is in nature and, of course, in Scripture. So God is giving and God is love. John says, God is love, and this is how he showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. God gives love, and he gives it perfectly. He gives it perfectly. But it's not so simple when it comes to you and me. We can't love perfectly. We have a hard time loving perfectly perfectly because we are so imperfect. We're so imperfect that we get confused about what love is, what it looks like, how to receive it, how to give it. For example, in our day, we have uh, sort of turned this whole verse on its head. People have an idea not of God as love, that God is love, and therefore God, you know, whatever he says, whatever he does, whatever he gives is good and loving. Instead, we've kind of turned that on its head, and we say, love is God, and people begin to worship love and an ever-expanding definition of love as God itself, kind of a category error. 
in a fallen world, people begin to worship sex as love or def de define sex as love, sexual desire. And that leads to all kinds of problems, all kinds of brokenness. People also look at love as unconditional love. But a lot of times what we think of or what we express as unconditional love is little more than appeasement, trying to keep peace, trying to, to make sure that we don't rock the boat. And a lot of times in this thing that we call unconditional love, we can actually be enabling people to do things that are really unloving and uncaring. Think about all the people who have indulged a partner, a husband, a wife, who is addicted to alcohol, addicted to drugs, one thing or another. And what we think of as unconditionally loving that person is really very costly to the family, to children. So we have a, a, an issue with understanding how to love, what real love is, because we have an imperfect uh, view of everything. Now, God, in his love, gives us Jesus to kind of help us clarify what love is, to help us understand what love is. For instance, if you grew up after 1970 and the movie Love Story, you might think, or in the back of your mind somewhere have the idea that love is never having to what? Say you're sorry. Love is never having to say you're sorry. As though people who really love each other can do almost anything to each other and never have to offer any kind of apology. But that's not what Jesus would say. That's not what Jesus demonstrates. Jesus would say that if we really love somebody, we should always be ready to say we're sorry. We should always be ready to be asking for forgiveness and offering forgiveness and actually truly repenting and changing our way for the sake of love. So to say love is never having to say you're sorry, I don't think Jesus would say that. Some people think that love is never saying no, never saying no to anybody, that that's how you, you show love. And they might even look at Jesus and say, well, look, Jesus was completely self-sacrificing, and so I'm being sacrificing. I am never saying no to anybody. I never have boundaries over what I will and will not do, or what I will tolerate, what I won't tolerate. But the difference there is Jesus would never do that. Jesus gave. He did give of himself, but he gave freely. So often when we are thinking that we are giving and giving and giving, we're not doing so freely. We're doing so under duress. We're doing so because of fear that we're going to lose somebody's approval. We're going to disappoint somebody. We're going to lose somebody's love. So that's just a couple examples of how when we are looking at how it is to love, Jesus is actually showing us something different. Sometimes people think loving is just being always agreeable. But Jesus wasn't always agreeable. He was actually confrontational very often, especially in defense of what God's truth is, especially in defense of God's truth. So, again, we have an imperfect way of looking at love. Sometimes we get mixed up about it. Sometimes with every good intention we get mixed up about it. But God has given us Jesus to help us clarify what real love is. For example, in the book of John, we're told that one day the Pharisees brought a woman to visit Jesus. Now, you'll remember that the Pharisees were those religious leaders, those scribes, who were always trying to challenge Jesus, right? They didn't like what Jesus was teaching about God. They were always trying to challenge him, trying to trip him up, see if he would say something or do something that they could use against him later. Well, on this day, the teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought in a woman who was caught in adultery. And they made her stand before the group and said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. Now, in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. Now, what do you say? Now, of course, again, they're trying to get Jesus to say something that they can use against him later. 
But what Jesus actually does here not only clarifies what God's intentions are with all of these laws, but he also clarifies for us, I think, a really good way to love. They say, what do you say? And Jesus doesn't say a whole lot. If you remember the story, Jesus just begins to write in the dirt. He writes a word in the dirt. Nobody knows what this word is. Everybody wishes they did, but Jesus writes this word in the dirt. And after he writes the word, he just straightens up. And he said this, let any one of you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. So you all want to accuse this woman Go ahead. You have my permission. Stone the woman. But only if you've no sin in yourself. And then Jesus went back and started writing in the dirt again. And when he looked up, he noticed that all those Pharisees, beginning with the eldest, had sort of, you know, skulked away, just kind of melted away. And the woman was left standing with Jesus. In this little story, Jesus gives us a really beautiful, I think, example of how we can approach each other in love. Because the first thing that Jesus does here, when they bring this woman before him, and she is standing there, the first thing he does is he loves her with compassion. He loves her with compassion in that he will not condemn her. He will not condemn her. Jesus doesn't see her only as a person who has fallen, a person who has sinned. And there's no reason to think that she hadn't. There's no reason to think that she hadn't really been caught in adultery. But still, Jesus doesn't see that as the most important thing about her in this moment. He sees her as someone who, like everybody, is potentially able to find redemption. He sees this woman not as the sum total of her mistakes or her problems or her sin, but as who she is in that moment, someone who can find redemption. So he loves her with compassion. And that's a great place for us to start anytime with anybody, isn't it? To love with compassion that will not judge, will not condemn. That sees people first as children of God, potentially able to find redemption, and never as someone who is just a problem, even if they've caused us a lot of pain. We can always see people first, love them with compassion seeing them as children of God. So, Jesus sees this woman. He loves her with that kind of compassion, but he doesn't end there. He goes on to love her and everybody in that whole scene with conviction, with conviction. What Jesus does is he upholds a standard for himself and for everybody else with conviction. He will not let these Pharisees indulge in hypocrisy right in that moment. He won't let them. His convictions will not let him. He holds up a standard. You will not stand here and indulge in hypocrisy, accusing this woman without first having looked at your own heart. At the same time, he doesn't let this woman just skate, does she? Does he? She does stand there, and he lets her stand there to accept responsibility for what she's done. She stands there with the weight of what she's done on her shoulders. He upholds a standard to which he holds himself and to which he holds others, and that he, he makes very clear. And we can do that same kind of thing, to love others with conviction, love others making clear our boundaries, the things that we will not tolerate, the things that we will not accept in a relationship, the things that we will do, the things that we won't do, to love others with conviction, conviction, holding ourselves 
and others to those standards. Now, it's so important where we get our standards, right? The worst place to get our boundaries and get our standards is out of our hearts or out of our feelings or what everybody else is doing around us. We have to go to the timeless place to where we can find timeless boundaries and timeless values upon which we stand. So that's where we can find our convictions. Where we want to love with compassion, not judging, not condemning. Love with conviction, upholding standards for ourselves and for those around us. Finally, Jesus loves with courage. Now, it takes courage to love with compassion, to not go ahead and condemn. After all, he was under a lot of pressure to condemn this woman. It also takes courage to stand up for our convictions, to stand up and live by certain standards. But Jesus loves with courage here because he loves with the courage to tell the truth to this woman about what she needs to do moving forward, what she needs to do to better her life right now. As they all left, Jesus stood up and asked her, woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she said. Well, neither do I condemn you. Of course, he loves with compassion. But Jesus then goes on to tell the truth. He says, go now and leave your life of sin. Go now and leave your life of sin. He loves her enough to tell the truth that's going to point her towards redemption, point her towards reconciliation with God. Now, she may not take that advice. She may not do it. That's up to her. And even if she doesn't, you know that Jesus will still love her with compassion, not condemning her, love her with conviction, continually holding up those standards, and continually to offer her that truth. But he does that. He offers her the truth of God in love. We can do a lot worse than loving people in these three ways. With compassion, with conviction, and with courage. John said, God is love. God is love. And this is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. We live through Christ. We live eternally through Christ. When we have faith in him, when we decide that we are going to follow him in this life, we live through him. But we live through him right now. And he lives through us also when we determine that we're going to love the way that he loved. With compassion. With conviction. With courage. To love the way that Jesus loved. Well, next week, we're going to be moving into the Easter season and Lent. We're going to start a new series called The Blessed Writings on the Wall. We're going to be looking at a lot of Old Testament prophecies and Old Testament writings that pointed to the resurrection and point towards our salvation today. But this week, in any situation, wherever we are, with any people with whom we are dealing in our encounters this week, let's try to love those people with that compassion that does not condemn or judge, with conviction that upholds standards for ourselves and for those around us, and then with courage, courage to tell one another the truth in love. Let's just see if we can't own up to love in the way that Jesus loved. Amen? All right. Let's go ahead. We're going to move